Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a Korean crime, horror, mystery film from 2020, titled The Call. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Seo Yun arrives at the village where she used to live as a little girl and Sung Ho picks her up to take her to her house. Her mom is very sick, so on the way there, he asks the young woman if she went to see her at the hospital. She doesn't answer because she realized that she had lost her phone at the station and she's worried about that. As soon as she gets inside the house, she finds a cordless phone and plugs it in. A bit later, the phone rings and Seo Yun picks up and hears a woman's voice, misplacing her for someone else, saying her mom is crazy. When she realizes she has the wrong number, the woman hangs up. Later that day, Seo Yun visits her mother's doctor, who tells her she has a tumor in her brain that is operable, but that the procedure is very difficult and she needs to be taken to a specialist. She sits with her mom in her hospital room for a bit and the woman tells Seo Yun that she needs to begin with the arrangements for her burial. Seo Yun gets very upset when her mom tells her to ask if she can be buried with or next to her father so she storms out of the room. She visits he dad's grave next, where it states that he died in 1999. When Seo Yun comes back home the mysterious phone call returns as well. She realizes that the woman calling her is saying that she's calling from her own address. That night Seo Yun is woken up by a loud clatter in the house, goes to investigate it and sees that it was only a photo that has fallen from its post. She tries hanging it up again but discovers that the wall it was hanging from is fake, covering up the existence of an entirely different room. After she breaks down the wall, she goes into the room with a flashlight and finds a box filled with different things, including a girl's journal. As she flips through it, a photo of the girl drops from it. Next, Seo Yun shows the photo to Sung Ho and he says that it's Young Suk. The house used to belong to her stepmom, who was something like a shaman. After telling her the bare minimum, he pretends that he can't remember anything else from that time. Seo Yun realizes the photo is dated to 1999. On her way home, she sees a store that has the name of the woman, Soon He, her mysterious caller has been asking for. That night she gets another call with the woman on the other side frantically screaming until she gets dragged away from the phone by her stepmom. The mom tries to burn her, but they struggle and light fire to the room that Seo Yun discovered previously. Seo Yun goes over to the opening she made in the wall and can see smoke and fire crackling on the stairs. Sometime later, the phone rings again and Seo Yun tells the woman that she knows she's Young Suk and that she's found her photo from November the 26th, 1999. Young Suk says that it's only the 18th, so Seo Yun reads a passage from her journal of the previous day. She checks what she wrote and when she confirms it's the same, Young Suk gets scared. Seo Yun, aware that it might sound unbelievable, tells her that her theory for what's happening is that they're both living in the same house but at a different time. To confirm her idea further, she finds a newspaper article for November 18th and tells Young Suk to watch the news that night for a report on a plane crash. Young Suk has dinner with her mom that night and the woman threatens her that if she doesn't eat she'll take her back to the institution, so she begins stuffing her face. After getting her mom upset, she sees the report on the plane crash and calls Seo Yun again. The two women connect as Seo Yun tells Young Suk about the future like her favorite musician returning to the music scene as well as new technology that still sounds bonkers in 1999. When Young Suk tells her that her biological mom has died and the woman torturing her is her stepmom, Seo Yun tells her how her father died. There was a fire in their house when she was young because her mom forgot to turn off the gas and her dad died in the fire. On November 21, 1999, Seo Yun and her family arrive at Young Suk's house to take a look at it, thinking of buying it. At this point in time, her father is still alive. Young Seo Yun runs upstairs and they find Young Suk's room, asking her stepmom to open the door. When Young Suk appears at the door and realizes who the people are, she calls older Seo Yun again and lets her listen to her father talking. It's a very moving moment for Seo Yun who hasn't heard his voice in 20 years. Young Suk comes up with the idea to save her father from the fire herself. On November 27th, when Seo Yun's father was supposed to die, Young Suk manages to escape the house without her stepmom knowing and travels to the house where Seo Yun lived before they moved. Younger Seo Yun is watching TV and her mom is painting her nails, while there's lunch cooking on the stove. Later, the mom leaves the house and Young Suk steals the key while Seo Yun plays with her dad. Young Suk enters the house as the fire is starting. Back in the present, Seo Yun's cell phone is back in her possession and the burn scar on her leg disappears. Suddenly, her entire house begins to change as well as herself in her room. Seo Yun walks downstairs, then out of the house when she sees a beautiful glasshouse garden. As she enters it, first she sees her mom, and then her dad shows up. Seo Yun begins to cry when she sees him in front of her, then hugs him, confusing both of her parents. Later, she calls Young Suk to thank her. Seo Yun spends time with both of her parents, then shares new music with Young Suk over the phone. The two of them keep communicating over time and keep getting closer. Until one day when Seo Yun can't talk on the phone because she's spending time with her parents. 
Young Sook keeps calling her and gets mad when she doesn't call her back. When they finally speak again, it starts becoming apparent that Young Sook isn't well. Seo Young hears screams over the phone and then Young Sook's stepmom's voice, telling her to stay away from her or she'll get hurt. In the past, Young Sook's stepmom is performing an exorcism on her, convinced that she can help her like that, as the young woman keeps begging her to stop. The stepmom flogs her and then speaks chants over her crying face, as Young Sook apologizes, hoping that will make her stop. After that, Young Sook's stepmom goes to Soon-hee's store and notices that Young Sook has been there too. She sees the wound that the woman has on her leg. In the present, Seo Young can't help herself from searching for Young Sook online. When she can't find her on any social media, she searches for her address and reads a news report about Young Sook's untimely death during an exorcism that her stepmother had performed on her. Young Sook calls her and Seo Young tells her that she thinks that she will die that night. Her stepmom gets a knife from the aquarium and goes up to her room. She winces as she flings up the knife and begins stabbing the bed, where she thinks Young Sook is sleeping. The woman however isn't in the bed as the stepmom discovers in horror. Young Sook laughs at her, then get the fire extinguisher to incapacitate her. She finds the knife in the hazy room and confronts her stepmom, then kills her, getting a taste for blood. After that, she calls Seo Young, who waits worried by the phone and relaxes when Young Sook tells her that she's fine. Furthermore, she says she feels reborn. Young Sook can be seen in the next shot, finally outside of the house, happy that she's been freed. First, she treats herself to a meal she actually likes, that buys herself new clothes. In the present, Seo Yun welcomes Sung Ho into the family home, as he comes in to deliver their strawberries. Everyone is excited about the fruit and thanking Sung Ho for bringing it to the house. He makes a different delivery to the house in the past, but this time Young Sook opens the door. She's happy about her new clothes and shows them off to Sung Ho, then invites him in. Sung Ho asks about her mom, but she just wants to know which of her new things he likes better and leaves him alone in the den, as she runs off to find other pieces she's bought. Meanwhile, Sung Ho goes to the kitchen to take care of the strawberries when he finds a bunch of foul-smelling black plastic bags in the fridge. As he moves one to make room for the fruit, he drops it on the floor and when he picks the bag up, he realizes that it's filled with body parts. Sung Ho freaks out just as Young Sook finds him in the basement, wearing the other outfit she wanted to show him. She's angry that he opened the bag and disappears into another room to grab the fire extinguisher, as the man stupidly sits in the kitchen. Meanwhile, back in the present, Seo Yun's family is having some tea with him and his little dog, having a nice conversation, and eating some of the strawberries. The phone rings and Seo Yun pick it up from her room. She hears Sung Ho sobs from the past over the phone and Young Sook cursing that she's ruined her new clothes. The phone call drops suddenly. Seo Yun has a bad feeling about the conversation she just had and when she comes back downstairs, she sees that Sung Ho isn't there anymore. In fact, he was never even there and her parents have never even heard of him. Just in case, she checks the refrigerator, then walks over to his strawberry farm, only to find it desolate. Seo Young goes to the police station in the village and asks the police officers if they know him. While the younger police officer has never heard of him or his strawberry farm before, the older one does. He asks Seo Young why she would be asking for someone that has been dead for 20 years and shocks her with a question. The officer takes her in the back and shows her his notes on the crime, where it's stated that he was murdered by Young Sook at her home. The police visit Young Sook in the past as well, making inquiries about Sung Ho, before they knew she was the one that murdered him. She tries to lie to them that she doesn't know him, but one of the cops, which is the older one that Seo Yun talked to in the future, notices the discrepancies in her replies. Young Sook says that she doesn't know him and that her mom isn't there to tell them if she's seen him, but the officer notices the strawberry delivery in the house. She lies to cover her tracks again, but the cop can tell she isn't being truthful and takes down a few notes, making her nervous. Young Sook blabs something about a murder in the village, but the police officer, even though suspicious, still leaves her house. Older Seo Yun finally goes to talk to Soon-hee, the shop owner, to ask her about what actually happened to Young Sook and her stepmom. Soon-hee tells her that she thought Young Sook was a well-behaved girl, who would listen to her talk about her husband for hours. Sometimes, she would sneak snacks into her room, until one day she hurt her really bad. If it wasn't for Young Sook's stepmom, Soon-hee would have been dead. Later, Young Sook calls Seo Yun as she thaws out the body part from her fridge. Seo Yun picks up and immediately asks her if she killed Sung Ho. Young Sook lies to her, so Seo Yun reads her a newspaper heading about the day she was arrested by the police as a serial killer and sentenced to life in prison. A life sentence doesn't sound too grand to Young Sook so she drops the act, making it apparent to Seo Yun that she really killed the strawberry farmer. Young Sook then begins questioning Seo Yun how the police found out that she committed the crime and tells her that she will need her to find out how that happened so she can prevent her own capture. She won't let Seo Yun forget what she did for her and gets really angry when Seo Yun keeps hanging up on her. Both women react very differently to the whole situation, 
one is terrified and crying, unable to do anything from her end, while the other is angry and vengeful, dialing Seo Yun's number over and over. The cop keeps investigating Young Suk in 1999, seeing that she has some mental health issues. As Young Suk keeps trying to reach Seo Yun in the future, she hears a knock on the door and when she opens it, she sees her younger self there, together with her father. He tells Young Suk that they are looking for her stepmom, who was supposed to meet them at the realtor's office some time ago. Young Suk says that she must have fallen asleep and invites them to wait for her inside. Seo Yun is with her father in the future as well. He notices that she's worried and asks her about it, but she says that she's fine. Her dad stops the car and makes her drive so that he can cheer her up. He tells her that she needs to be more gentle with the pedals so that when she stops the car she won't spill the coffee. Seo Yun successfully does that by his instruction. Back in the past, Young Suk is getting ready to hurt him, as he waits with Seo Yun in the den. The little girl is eating one of the strawberries as she sees Young Suk approaching and spraying her dad with the fire extinguisher. In the present, Seo Yun drives into a tunnel when she sees her dad vanishing slowly right in front of her eyes and that version of the future crumbles away with the broken glass of the car. Cut to a terrified, Young Seo Yun who backs away from her father's blood and the image of Young Suk killing him. The older version of her wakes up in the tunnel, without her dad. Young Suk approaches the littler version of Seo Yun and tells her that her dad's death is her fault for not picking up the phone. Present day Seo Yun runs back to the house, finding it in an awful state and seeing the word Seo Yun, answer the phone written in blood on the floor. Sure enough, the phone rings and she has no hesitation whether she should pick it up. Young Suk toys with her about the way she killed her dad, making Seo Yun angry as heck, threatening to kill her. There's one problem though, while Seo Yun can't get to Young Suk, she has the younger version of her strapped to a chair, making her the one with the upper hand in the situation. Young Suk tells her that she has one hour to find out how the police will arrest her or she'll hurt her mother too. Seo Yun has an idea how to get herself out of the situation and take down Young Suk for good. Her plan is to send Young Suk to a place where she has researched that an accident will happen and retroactively kill her that way. Seo Yun sends her to a location where a gas explosion should happen, telling Young Suk that there she will find the man who discovers the knife with her bloody fingerprints. She waits to see it happen on her phone, but Young Suk manages to save her hide again because she leaves the building before it explodes. Needless to say, she's very angry with Seo Yun when she calls her back after. Young Suk shows her just how upset she is with her, by leaving her on the phone as she burns her younger self with scorching water and scars appear on the older Seo Yun's body as well. To make it even worse, she plays Seo Yun a voice message her mom left her dad, saying that she's coming after them. And Young Suk doesn't stop there either but keeps turning the figurative knife further, by telling her that she was the one responsible for her father's death in the first place. It seems that her mom turned off the gas before she left the house that day and that it was Seo Yun who turned it back on, mistakenly thinking she's doing the opposite. In the present, Seo Yun sees no other way but to actually find the information she wants, so she breaks into the police station to get her file. She opens the police officer's notebook and learns how they finally caught her, sending Young Suk in the right place this time. Young Suk finds the man when he discovers the knife with her prints that she thought she had disposed of and kills him with it too. The information vanishes from the notebook, but new information appears on her mom searching for Seo Yun at the local police station. Seo Yun sees a play-by-play -play of what is happening in the past inside the officer's notebook, who decides to help her mom when he learns the address where her husband and daughter were supposed to go to. Suddenly, all the information about Young Suk disappears from it and the house begins to change again. Seo Yun runs away from the house but keeps on reading that her mom and the cop went to pay Young Suk a visit searching for her and her dad. Young Suk lies that they left the house earlier, but Seo Yun's mom finds her hair bow. She and the officer ask to search the second floor of the house but find nothing there. Meanwhile, when Seo Yun comes back inside the house in the future, she discovers that Young Suk has had a particularly prolific career as a serial killer. She comes down into the room she found at the beginning of the movie and finds the phone down there. In the past, Seo Yun's mom has the idea to call her husband's phone to make sure if he's there or not. The mom uses Young Suk's phone to make the call and instead of her husband, calls her daughter in the future, screaming at her to get out of the house. Simultaneously, Young Suk hits Seo Yun over the head and the line is broken. In the past, Young Suk kills the officer in front of her mom's eyes and asks for the phone. The older Young Suk taunts Seo Yun, as her younger self calls her on the phone. The women struggle for the phone until Seo Yun knocks Young Suk out and grabs the phone. A simultaneous chase happens in both the past and the present, with Young Suk chasing after Seo Yun and her mom in both timelines. They both hide in the same room as the homicidal maniac slams at the door. Suddenly, the phone rings and it's Seo Yun's mom calling the police, but Seo Yun from the future tells her to calm down and find a weapon. The woman finds a fire extinguisher, removes the safety pin, and waits until Young Suk opens the door. 
Unfortunately, the young sook from the past has the devious idea to get the mom out of the room by placing her kid in front of it, calling for her. Young sook attacks her with a knife, as her older self gets closer to getting inside the room with Seo Yun. Before young sook can stab her mom in the past, she grabs onto the knife and struggles with her for it. Seo Yun from the future sees the blood from the struggle on the walls, as young sook comes into the room at last. However, Seo Yun's mom tackles young sook in the past before she can strike the child and they both fall over the railing. The older version of Young Sook vanishes from the future and Seo Yun finds herself in the desolate house alone. Later, Seo Yun from the future runs to the graveyard, thinking that her mom is dead too. The woman, however, shows up there as well, smiling and asking her why she's crying. Seo Yun is happy to have her mom alive still and realizes that she's actually kinda great. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.